The board is charged with hearing applications for special exceptions, variances, and administrative appeals. All testimony is recorded for the record, and anyone wishing to speak will need to be sworn and must come to the podium and speak. No testimony can be taken from the floor. When you come up to the podium, state your name, and please speak clearly into the microphone because the meeting is being recorded. For those of you who plan to speak, you must be sworn. So if you're here as an applicant or here to speak on any case, please stand at this time and raise your right hand. Do you affirm or attest that the testimony you will give today is the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Now I'll turn it over to Rachel. Good morning. So there have been a few agenda changes, so I'll go over those very quickly. Um, item number two, 2018-0013, um, it's 3006 Divine Street. The applicant decided this morning to defer um, just to have more time to discuss the case with surround the surrounding area. So that one will not be discussed today. And item number five, 2017-0072-621-623 Saluda, that has been withdrawn by the applicant. So I want to briefly touch on the meeting format. We will be using timers today. Applicants are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This includes, but is not limited to, an overview of the project, case history, and any pertinent meetings held regarding the request. It also includes all persons presenting on behalf of the applicant, such as attorneys, engineers, and architects. So it does not include any time for questions asked by the board. Um, any member of the public can address the board in intervals of three minutes or five minutes if by a spokesperson for an established body or a group of three or more. The board reserves the right to amend these procedures. And if you didn't have a chance to sign in this morning, the sign-in sheet's on the podium. So if, if you come up to talk, just please make sure to sign that. So and now I'll go over the consent agenda. So the board uses the consent agenda to approve any non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion and vote. If a member of the board or the public wants to discuss an item on the agenda, that item is removed from the consent agenda and considered during the meeting. The board then approves the remaining agenda items. So the first matter of business on the consent agenda is the approval of minutes, and that's to approve the February 13th, 2018 minutes. Then we have item number three, 2018-0015 variance for 918 Sims Avenue. It's a variance to the side yard setback. And then item number four, 2018-0017 variance for 121 Shop Road Extension, a variance to parking requirement for a warehousing use. Is anyone in the public or on the board want to remove any of these items from this consent agenda? I will accept the motion then. Let me make a motion. We approve the consent agenda, subject to any staff comments. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. All right. On the regular agenda, we have a little bit of a shift with the order. Um, item number seven, 2018 0014, 1323 Claremont. They have a restriction they need to be somewhere, so they have requested to be heard first on the regular agenda today. The applicant is here to discuss their variance to the fence height requirement. Gentlemen, my name is Beth Bernstein. I'm an attorney here in Columbia. And I am here representing Mrs. Barry Arnold Thompson. And she has prepared a PowerPoint presentation, which I've got hard copies, if I may approach and, and present those. And I'm going to let her go through the presentation. This is a variance for her fence. And if you have any questions, please um, let me know, and I will interject if necessary. But she is well equipped to present this. We on her say. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Barry Arnold Thompson. 
Um, my husband, Lance, is over there with us today. He and I and our two young daughters live at 1323 Claremont Drive. We moved there in 2015, just a couple weeks after the flood. We are applying for a variance for a 12-foot fence. Um, Y'all can see the orange fence line on the right side is the proposed fence. Full disclosure, I didn't know we had to have a permit to build a fence on the side of our property, so it is 90% up. But I think that that's going to help today <laughs> because it helps to illustrate what we're trying to do. Um, Y'all's main criteria, the thing that really stuck out to me that um, is the reason we need the variance is topography. Our yard from left to right slopes um, a great bit. We actually measured it this weekend. Um, on the left side of our home, the, from the ground level to first floor bedroom windows is approximately 48 inches. Did you put that extra um, slide in? I think you have the house picture down there. It's in the house. Here. It's okay, I'll go there. want y'all that's the house so you can see on the left side our home is mainly all one floor the left side of the house the bedroom windows are four feet from ground to the bottom of the window exterior measurement on the right side of the house where the proposed fence is going to go the lot not only slopes down from left to right but it also slopes from front street towards the back and the window measurement from ground to the bottom of the windows there varies from eight and a half feet to nine and a half feet. So it's a five foot difference in ground level from the left side of our house to the right side of our house. We are also, how do I get back? Sorry guys, we're hopping back and forth. Um, this has been a plan of ours since we moved in, but moving in a couple weeks after the flood, we had other issues that needed to be taken care of budget-wise first. This is the view from our front porch, so you can see that we are raised higher than our neighbors. Um, just for namesake, to make things easy, I'm gonna call this house right here the Hoffs. That's the current people that live there, where it says the Hertz. Right here is the Catanos. I have support already from Margaret and John Mood that live back here, as well as letters across the street from Betsy and John Bacus, Lisa and Jonathan Vipperman, and as well as Jack and Carrie Presley. So let me keep moving forward. As you can see in the right picture, there's approximately I don't know 40 feet tall viburnum that used to carry all the way across screening between us and the Hoffs the whole way through. The Hoffs moved in last year. We're very excited to have young new neighbors with young children in the neighborhood. Not as excited about the um, pool view, but hey, I'm glad that they got to put a pool in. This is what the entire screening between us and the Hoffs used to look like right here. So when the trees got pulled out so they could put their new pool and their pool equipment in, this is now a not zoomed two scale view from our six year old daughter's bedroom window. The view is not pretty, but that's not even why we're here today. I'm here because it's a safety, security, and privacy issue for my six and nine year old daughters from their bedroom and their bathroom windows. This property to the left with that chain link fence is the Catanos. <clears throat> Since then, my husband and I have tried to make improvements on our own. We planted all of these viburnum, which was a few thousand dollars at wholesale price because my husband owns a landscaping company. We planted these in after the yard had sat like this since last October, my husband and I, or actually August. My husband and I went ahead and planted these on our side because we understand the Hoffs have plenty of other stuff going on as they've moved into a new home. This is the secondary backyard of the Catanos. This is what is behind the other part of the fence that leads into our backyard. This does not turn into a green forest of beautifulness in the spring and summer. That's what it looks like. Um, just to kind of give you better perspective. Yes. Just a quick question. I'm trying sure. to orient myself. So the Catano house fronts on Belmont next to the Moods. Correct. The, this is the Catanos right here. Catano, they are next door neighbors with the Hoffs, so they both face Saramont. 
we face Claremont. So it's a unique situation because this is my front yard, this is my house, and we are surrounded by all backyards. We don't really have any traditional next door so neighbors. Tano fronts on Belmont. Saramont. Saramont. Correct. Belmont the is behind us. That's where the moods are, okay. Yeah, the moods are on Belmont right back here in this little corner. Right, okay, I got it. Right, so the Hertz, if you I know got the it. I got it, I got it. The, the, the Catano house is to the right of the Hertz old house. Bingo, you got Bingo. it, exactly, Bingo. right. So that's theirs right there. It kind of tucks into the back right corner of our gotcha. yard. Gotcha. Y'all please interject as much as you want because I think it helps to explain the situation. So just to kind of put things in perspective, this left picture, you can see this pool that my cursor is over right now. This is our backyard. This red square right here is the secondary lot of the Catano's backyard, the one I showed y'all that is not landscaped and not overgrown. It's completely fenced off separately from their main backyard, which is right here. If you measure that on any satellite program, it shows you that it is more than 50 yards from the back of the Catano's house to the fence. And you can even see the fence barely picking out right there. So that's a fair assessment of a measure, I'd say. It's 50 yards. It's half of a football field. Um, and it's not all pruned and landscaped. That's the view that we're not trying to block the view, but that is the Catano's back of their house. Their view is into our backyard where our young daughters swim and play and into their bedroom and their bathroom window. Let's see if we can get this one to go. You think it'll go here? Did it? So it's sideways, but this is our, my daughter has called it the disco view in the evening. This is not zoomed either. Um, it flickers in my children's bedroom. The first time I saw it at night through privacy lines, I thought that there were police outside the window and I was really confused because it's on the side of the house. But the lights change colors. Sometimes they're on until 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Um, and we now have blackout shades in my daughter's bedroom that stay closed all day and all night because of this. Let's see. Just in case the video didn't work, I wanted y'all to see the lovely view that we have. Oh, hold on. There you go, Calhoun. It's colorful, isn't it? Um, this is the fence that is already built. A couple reasons I'm glad it's already here. As y'all can see that our backyard is pretty much built on retaining walls because of the topography. This steps down into the side yard. But this is the proposed fence that's already there. And as you can see, it, it doesn't cover 100% of the windows on the side of the house anyways. Um, but this area where I'm standing is where the pool and the living area are. They're elevated even more. So a seven foot fence just does not provide seven feet of coverage when the land slopes down five extra feet on that side of the yard. This is the fence on the back of our property line between us and our Belmont neighbors. And it was obviously already there. I believe the Browns built it when they moved in in the 90s. It may even be the DeBoses. I asked Trish DeBose, our- How tall is that fence? What? The, the existing fence. Oh, it's 12 feet. 12 feet. So, and it dips down a little bit. As you can see from left to right, the yard slopes down. Another reason that we, pick the 12 foot height is because the top of the fence line lines up perfectly with the new proposed fence. Um, so we didn't just pull that number out of thin air. It lines up, it looks, it makes sense. Um, this is a non-zoomed, non-edited view from Claremont Drive. You can see, I wanna tell y'all how far off the street we are. Let's see. Um, from the street to, you can see our daughter's little tree swing right there, is approximately 60 to 70 feet from that swing in that tree. From the street to the corner of our home, where that gutter is right there on the right, is 124 feet, and then it's 140 feet to the proposed fence. So, again, it's, I don't know, that's probably 40, not quite 50 yards off the street. Um, the Letters that I have from our neighbors do say that they can't see them when they're driving by. Um, 
really the only two properties that can see it are the Hoffs or the Catanos. I checked with everybody else. All right, so um, I just want to interject a little bit. I, I, you've done an extraordinary job of, of answering all of the questions about the um, uh, that we have to use as our criteria you. Um, to you know to, uh, to grant a variance and um, the one question I had was um, is it the variance quest the minimum necessary it is and it is for a few reasons a the math that I told y'all earlier on one side it's four feet <coughs> from ground level to windows and on the other side it's what did I say um, eight and a half to nine and a half feet so we'll say that's an average of five foot difference um, or five feet between the other ground level. Well, seven feet is the, what code allows, seven plus five is 12. I mean, that's exactly how we got there in addition to trying to stay with our neighbor's fence lines in the backyard. And the existing fence that was already in your backyard, right? Was that put up by the previous owners of your home, the 12 foot fence? You know, I honestly, I don't know if it was the Browns who we bought our home from or DeBose. Trish DeBose lives on Belmont behind us. They're very friendly and we had a fence board broken a month ago and I wanted to make sure if it was our responsibility or hers and she said, I don't know who's that's, whose fence that is, I'll get back to you. And so we'll figure it out and gotcha. they don't seem worried about it, nor are we. Okay. A little historical context that you might know. I just, I've been selling residential real estate for 20 plus years, but and I forget who owns it, but there's a there's an older house to the left of y'all, and at right. one point all that property was that was that one big parcel, and at some point I think in the late 70s or 80s, whomever owned that developed it because Shirley Curry was a builder, and you had a bunch of big custom houses that were built on Kenilworth right. in between Claremont and Belmont, right. And so what's interesting is, is you now look at that old house and it's, it, it looks kind of funny the way it's situated and y'all have all got lots to scale. I mean, I, I bet you the average size footage of those houses are 5,000 plus square feet, Correct. which is what the, the Hertz house is as well. But it is a little different for, for Heathwood in that, you know, when they were, when those lots were being cut out, you know, the, do you've got that slope from from front to back and left and right because they, they were never initially you know I guess way back when when the Mannings were developing Heathwood and grading stuff out they didn't do it because that was one big parcel right so the Browns actually still live there they're the ones that bought it from the Thorns in the 70s they are 95 97 years old that's now. right it was and, the Thorns um, they supported us but this Brown fell and hit her head and I, I was not going to ask a 95 year old woman to write a letter but um they they have seven children six went to notre dame and one went to duke and every time a child went to college they sold off a lot <laughs> and ours was the last one to go their son built that house but like you said it's very unique there's no next door neighbors right there in our little pod you know on kenilworth linwood saramont all around it's very traditionally oriented side by side but we're just not we're just kind of plopped stuck right back in there because that's actually where the kitchen of the original house used to be because back 200 years ago kitchens weren't in the main home so if i may add at, at this time i'm not sure if anyone is here to um, speak in opposition but i do know that there was a letter submitted in opposition by the house but i did want to point out in in the letter and the attached photography to that letter it's a little misleading and mis it's it misrepresents exactly the distance between the fence and their yard. Um, the, the view from Claremont Drive, the first photo that's on there, um, is a zoomed in photo. As you can see, the, the pictures that Mrs. Thompson has submitted um, are the accurate viewpoints, and they have not been zoomed in or zoomed out. So I did want to put that in if you had any questions in yeah, connection with that. Um, I don't know. Where is that? Uh, 
So it was, um, it's the first picture that says view from Claremont Drive. As you can tell, because of the pictures that Mrs. Thompson has submitted, that is really a zoomed in picture and does not accurate, accurately reflect the issue at hand and is um, somewhat misleading. If the Hoffs are here, I would ask them about that, but just wanted to point that out. If you stand on a 12 foot fence, it's gonna look like a 12 foot fence, but my house is eight feet away from the fence. Everybody else in question is 50 yards or more. The other thing I wanna say is if y'all approve today, my husband's original plan was for us to stain the fence a dark natural wood color and then to grow an evergreen climbing ivy all over it. So A, right now it looks like raw wood. When it's stained, that will greatly camouflage the fence as well as in about 12 to 18 months, we hope to have Carolina jasmine all over it and it just looks like a really pretty green space. And we would end that to reiterate that this would not be injurious to the neighborhood, the aesthetic of the neighborhood. Most of the neighbors are in agreement. And really for the Thompsons to have some kind of safety and well-being of their small children, she has two um, young daughters, six and nine, and really there would be no reason not to approve this variance because I think she's done an excellent job of explaining the, the need for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions from the, the board before they step in? Questions? Okay. Thank you all. Thanks. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor or against this application? Would you please approach the um, podium? Good morning. I know I have to be quick, the time limits and such. And your name is? My name, right, John Catano. I live at 1505 Saramont. I am at least one person who is greatly affected I would say adversely by the construction of this wall. Let me just say, my wife Kathy's here too. We live here. We've been living in 1505 Saramont, which our backyard, the wall goes all across the back lot line of our property. And let me just say before, and I know I have to hurry, I was out of town when this thing was being constructed. When I left, there was some like four by four poles going, I don't know, 15 at least feet in the air. And I thought, well, maybe you know, they're going to have some sort of scaffolding, you know, how those guys on a scaffold, they can crank up one end and the other and work in paint or do brickwork or whatever. And my wife then during the week was sending me photos of that they're building a fence, they're building that. So I get back in Friday night and it's dark out and uh, she says, well, wait, till you'll see it in the morning. So I, I wake up in the morning, I go out there and I'm looking and I thought, oh my gosh, someone dragged our house and landed it on second base at Fenway Park. I'm looking, and I'm not even a Red Sox fan. I am looking at a monster wall in my backyard. And uh, it does affect me. It may not affect anyone who's writing letters here, but it certainly has an adverse effect on our enjoyment. And to suggest, by the way, our secondary lot uh, is just all disheveled and unkept, it is beautiful in the summer. She can say whatever she wants. But it is nothing but beautiful ivy and every bush out there, are, the predecessor owners have flowering bushes and such. And it's beautiful. There's hawks up there, there's owls up there, and anything else that can survive underneath. But, you know, getting to the point, we finally today got at least some sort of tacit acknowledgement that they built this thing without a variance. And they said, oh, we didn't know we need a variance. And I'm not impugning anyone's integrity or anything, but for a husband who is a landscape designer, residential and commercial, not to know the ordinance is hard for me to swallow, and we still haven't even heard an apology. You know, like, hey, I'm sorry I did it without your guys' approval, but we did it, and therefore we're entitled to it? Is that, is that what we're here about today? I, I think not. Um, and just to briefly go through some of this uh, application, which was handwritten some of the stuff and then typewritten some of the stuff, when they're going for a 12-foot fence, you guys can go out there and measure 
with a tape measure, as I have many times. No part of that existing fence that they have built without a variance is 12 feet. None of it. The lowest part is 12 and a half feet, and it goes up to nearly 14 feet from ground to top. So this for a variance for a 12 foot fence is in and on its face misleading, I would suggest. And by the way, I, I wouldn't even characterize it as a fence. It, am I done? Yep, thank you for your testimony. I am done. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Thank you. Hi, I'm Catherine Catano. I live at 1505 Saramont Road. And we do back up to the side of their property. And I'm actually very sad that we have to be here today because who would want to come to have to squabble over a fence, you know? First of all, I would like to say, I wonder when they bought the property, they looked at their um, pool, their existing pool, and did they not look at what sort of fence is surrounding their pool? We have five kids and seven adult children, and um, seven grandkids, and that would have been my primary concern. Well, what sort of fence is surrounding my pool that's going, that my kids are going to be there? That's the safety, I would think, and the privacy and security that they would want to look for. Well, if you, I have submitted pictures. I don't know if you all got my pictures. Um, they show that they don't have a fence, really. It's chicken wire. It's some cinder blocks. What you see, that um, well-worn wood fence in the back, that was there. But to the side, which is the Moods property, and they're not here today, but they do back, um, no, they, are, they front onto Belmont. It is crazy the way it's chopped up. But that would be my first concern, would be, well, what's around our pool? What protects my kids around my pool? Because that would be more important, I would think, than they knew when they bought the home, the size of the windows, where they were. Now. Our, they want to call it our secondary lot. Okay, actually, the Wanamakers who live, we just bought it in August of 2016, and we're not done upgrading. That interior fence, we don't need any longer. We don't have a dog, but the Wanamakers had a dog. A perfect place for a dog, but we don't need it any longer. It's coming down. We've had a tree arborist come out, and I told Barry this. I, they've asked us five times to purchase the property. And we said, we love our property. We're not going to sell it to you. And so we, I told her, I said, we had a tree arborist, Tim Rushman, come out. He's done some landscaping. He had to take some trees down after Irma. And I said he was going to make a beautiful balcony, a you know, three-tier balcony of trees. And we're plant, planning on planting, planting green you know, stuff, beautiful stuff. It's like our little garden back there. And to think that we would have to look up at like, this huge fence is really disheartening in Heathwood. You could, go, you could go, I'm sorry, you could go to Richland County and not have that variance requirement. But Heathwood has these codes for a reason. And I would just say that some of the statements are misleading, okay? The Hoffs, they're unfortunately not able to be here today. But I can tell you that they don't have pool parties. Now, Barry and Lance have pool parties, a lot of them. And I had to actually record one because they're very loud and they go into the early morning hours. Thank that. you for your testimony. Is that done? Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor or against this application? I see none. I guess we can go to board discussion. Um, I didn't, and sometimes I do, but there was a lot of, of, of circumstances that I wanted to, to, that I think were, were added to the written application, which was, I think, very thoroughly went through each of the criteria for the zoning um, request. Um, and, uh, you know, my feeling is I think they probably um, definitely have met each and every one of them. Um, uh, for this um, this request, but I think it's certainly an interesting case. I can't remember a, a fence variance request that was five feet above the the 
city requirement, but I think one thing that does give me comfort is that you can't see it from the road. And I, I wouldn't want 12 foot fences throughout the city um, under any circumstances, but I think part of the reason why we're here today is there are unusual circumstances and um, this gives homeowners a opportunity for relief from the ordinance and um, based upon the testimony of the applicants I think I would be in favor of, of the request. I, I don't know whether or not the testimony regarding the existing height of the fence under construction is correct or not but I think were we to approve the variance request I think I would like to limit it to a 12 foot um, height because I wouldn't want it to be any higher than that so really don't have a problem with it well and I think it, it is unfortunate when you have these situations but just <clears throat> I'm real familiar with that property um, and there's a lot of back and forth I mean you know maybe the Thompson's have pool parties maybe they don't you know the, the I don't know if you pronounce it huff or hoff um, Bibbs Hurt was a previous owner, and she was a master gardener, and I think she would take great offense at, at somebody put it in writing that her yard was significantly unkept. And so I think that, that we have given these, you know, the Mungo Company came in. Mungo's the biggest, I think, builder in this, one of them in the southeast, much less Columbia. We had to give them a variance um, last month or the month before for this exact same thing. I mean, you would think the Mungo Company would know, but people make mistakes. Um, but I would concur with Gene. I think that and I've ridden by it. I hadn't walked the property, um, but it's, I think it is the minimum. I think that there are extraordinary um, things with this property, just given the history of it and how these lots were cut out. Um, and I would like to think, I, I've, I've taken viburnums and planted all my neighbors out. You can get them 40 feet high if you'll put the water to them. Um, I'd like to think that somebody, either Rick and Christina or the Thompsons, will will wall each other out. But the issue that you've got is, is that you know you need to do what you can do on your property to to, to try to um, remedy whatever situation you've got. So um, I don't know if there's any more board discussion, but. You know, Mr. Uh, Sally and Mr. I think over time, it, you know, when these things are initially constructed, is when they tend to look the worst as well. So over time, as you know, some of the vegetation fills in and grows up on the fence. I think we, you would be looking at more of a natural-looking situation and not such an an eyesore from the other side. I think you know, just give it some time and it, it'll accomplish its intended purpose and hopefully satisfy everyone around. Any other um, any other comments from the from the board? Make a motion. Yes, I am. Make a motion to approve uh, case number twenty eighteen dash zero zero one four variance for thirteen twenty three Claremont Drive. Um, this is to give a variance to the height requirement. And the staff comments that it asked the, for a 12-foot fence. Um, I'd like to limit it to that. So if that's what the applicant applied for, um, I don't know if I can, I need some help from staff, but, but maybe the city could go out and measure it and verify the, the height of it. If there's anything above the 12 feet, then, then I would ask the, the applicant to remove it. Um, whether their slope, is, is, it can't be any higher than 12 feet off the ground. make this motion contingent upon the staff comments um, and I'm making this motion to approve this variance and that um, I think the applicant has proved that there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions that pertain to this property that don't generally apply to other property in the vicinity. Um, it does prohibit um, and restrict the utilization of their property. The, the, this granting of this variance will not be a substantial detriment to any other adjacent property, the public good, the character of the neighborhood. Um, the 
This is the minimum necessary and the, this variance, granting this variance will be in harmony with the general purpose and intents of the ordinance. Um, it will not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Second. We have a motion. I would like to second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next case is item number six on the agenda, 2018-0003, special exception for 6104 North Main Street. It's a special exception to establish a coin-operated laundromat. And if the applicant is present, they can come forward. Good morning. Morning. I am Deborah Stratton, and I am the realtor involved in this transaction. Um, we were scheduled to speak with you last month, and uh, 30 minutes before the hearing, someone emailed the president of an HOA that they had concerns. I tried to, I know that the buyer tried to get a hold of them. I tried after about seven phone calls with no success. I spoke with Rachel. She said to document it. I kept calling after another three or four phone calls. It was verified that they would actually sit down and speak with us. Um, I, we anticipated that we were going to sit down and talk about this lot, and actually what we did was we were invited to a regularly scheduled HOA meeting where they had the opportunity to discuss the shootings in the neighborhood, the difficulty with crime and prostitution, and some of the other major concerns that they have. Um, we thought we were going there to listen to their concerns and objections. I anticipated it would be things like hours of operation, security, lighting, issues like that, and that wasn't how it ended up. 25% of the, there were a total of 14 people, which included three HOA officers um, and a couple police officers that came to talk about the shootings and the local crime. And 25% um, want absolutely nothing built there. They like it just to be vacant land. The other 75% did not want a laundromat. They did not feel that a laundromat was going to bring anything to their community. They already had washers at home. A laundromat isn't just for people who have no washing machines. I have an oversized washer at my house, and yet I go to a laundromat because I can't wash my boys' sleeping bags. In my, they won't fit in my washer, nor will the comforters, bedspreads, rugs, all of the things that are oversized I go to a laundromat for because they have those huge machines where you can actually put them in. Um, so we didn't uh, actually come to have the opportunity to address any types of concerns we were prepared to address. They actually brought an employee from the laundromat that they do operate, and he was coming to talk about the fact that he didn't have transportation and to be able to walk to this job and the opportunities that it gave him that he didn't already have. Um, so we didn't have that opportunity. Um, we concluded with um, one of the uh, former politicians who came telling us that if they persisted and opened the laundromat, that it's surrounded by three churches and that the people were active church goers and that they would influence the members of their churches to not support the business. It wasn't at all what I had anticipated. Um, we weren't really prepared for that. The buyer asked, what would you like to see instead? There was no response. Um, as a, a real estate agent for many years, I think that this is a great opportunity for this community. This property has been for sale for seven years, and the owner passed away, and now it's in uh, being represented by an executor, and so the price was cut by two-thirds, and these gentlemen want to come in 
The equipment alone for a laundromat is going to be a half a million dollars. Then you're looking at building a building. That's going to be another four, 450. It's going to be a great investment in an area where things have been closing, where there are a lot of closed and vacant spaces and things aren't happening. It's going to improve this lot. It's going to Okay, um, I, I really appreciate people. your um, uh, giving us the background on that. Could we go through the criteria? Do you have those with you real quickly in front of you there? Or is somebody else going to do that? It's going to employ some, he's going to speak, he's going to employ some local people. And it's going to also show people that when someone's coming in and putting in almost a million dollars, it will encourage other people to invest in this community. Thanks. Okay. I, I mean, I want to just add that, you know, we can do whatever in our hand to, you know, secure everything, you know, legal, nothing illegal activity going. We go fence, put camera, and we go put employee all the time until we open to close. I mean, what community have concern is like, you know, not in our hand to, you know, address the issue, what they got. Because they got, you know, all like a drug problem, prostitution problem, that's police and city guard come up. Okay, I'm gonna take you through the criteria one by one. Describe in what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on vehicular traffic or vehicular or pedestrian safety and how adequate provisions are made uh, in the proposed uh, exception for parking and for loading and unloading. We should have a copy of the plan. I think they had a plan drawn up. They're going to put a fence around the back area. Back, yeah. the They're going to have security cameras. They're going to have lighting that will not affect the neighborhood. It'll be nicely landscaped. It will have parking. They'll do, um, there'll be a driveway on the side street so that it facing the gas station so that there'll be, it won't affect the traffic flow. Will there be a curb cut onto North Main or just the side street? I don't have the plan. I believe I mean, there's two. Gotta, we got to go by city, what city suggests. We submitted a whole package last yeah. month. And then describe in what ways the special section will have will not have a substantial adverse impact on adjoining properties in terms of environmental factors such as noise, lights, glare, vibration, fumes, odors, obstructions of air, light, or litter. This this property is almost an acre, so the laundromat, how it'll be located, the property next to it, they've got the barber shop in the front, and the rest of it is just parking lot for the shopping center. It's the back parking lot for the shopping center, so there isn't anything. There's no, and there's no, I'm assuming that there's no, like, um, uh, we'll only be open emissions or anything coming from the laundry equipment. No, that everything will be all this new, brand new, computerized, where it's more efficient, cleans your laundry, uses less energy. Okay. And then describe in what ways the proposed special exception will not have a substantial adverse impact on the character of the area to include um, a review and orientation of the uh, spacing of the buildings. Well, it's almost an acre, so it's going to be quite a distance. On the next corner, adjacent to it is a gas station. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, all along the side, if you're looking, it's just, it's just parking. You can see the parking lot. It's the back parking lot for the shopping center. And then um, uh, talk about the uh, uh, impact on public safety uh, nuisance conditions. Um, which would potentially be detrimental in law enforcement response. Well, they don't allow loitering at their current location, and they don't have an issue with it. I, the ploy, we tried to get him to come today. He could not come. Um, but, uh, you know, he maintains that the one he's at, he keeps, there's no loitering. They don't have any issue with that. There's someone in the laundromat at all times supervising it to make sure that it's a safe place for people to come, usually women, some small children. Okay. And the reason he came up with the laundromat is because when he first came here, he lived for several years right there on that area of North Main. He rented, and he needed to use laundry facilities, and every time he went to the other laundromat farther in, he could never get a washing machine. 
So, and I understand they have issues with the gas station that's across from that other laundromat. There's some okay. issues down there, but that won't impact this at all. This will be clean and it'll be supervised. Right. Um, they're going to try to do a fluff and fold so that there'll also be an extra person in the building at all times and see if they can get a fluff and fold service. Let me just make sure I understand again. So the hours of operation are from when to when? Uh, 7 to 10. And there will be someone there that's yeah, an employee. Yeah, we go, we go hire two people. We go be, you know, one in eight, eight hours. So it's not going to be the kind of place where, and I'm sorry if, 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 if you're repeating yourself, where somebody can just walk in. It's just a, a storefront with washers and dryers. There, there, there will be somebody there. Yeah. Okay. We go have, you know, nighttime security and everything. Okay. And it's going to have those new machines that work with a card. Where they so they use a card and you have to have someone there all the time to help when people have trouble figuring out initially how you use the card to do your laundry and and you with the cost of the machines at eleven to thirteen thousand dollars a machine you need to have someone there to make sure that everything is you know not getting torn up uh, quickly um, so explain how this will not create a concentration or proliferation of of like. Uh, special exception uses in the area? Uh, please explain why this would not create a proliferation of, of similar special exception uses in the area. Well, I think that this laundromat should provide enough service for the community. They're building new apartments farther down. This should be all that the neighborhood should need. Where is the nearest uh, laundromat in relation to this? There is a laundromat going farther down. About how far you think? A mile? Half a mile? 1,500 feet. Yeah. In the point half point two, a mile. Point two miles? Point two miles. Yeah. It's right across from the Obama gas station where I don't know if you're, they have a lot of issues going back and forth between that laundromat and the gas station. I believe that's unsupervised and... So, so this one will be it's an unsupervised laundromat. Is that what you're saying? But, but. I guess they try to arrest people at the gas station and they run across the street to the laundromat and say they're doing their laundry. I don't know. But this will be supervised and they maintain real good control. They do it already on the location they have over there in Leesburg and Trotter. And, and um, I'm just sorry I couldn't get them get the employee. I didn't think about it. It's my fault till 5.30 this morning. <laughs> and it was just too late to make arrangements to get in okay, here. Okay, two more real quick really then. To talk. Okay, describe how the proposed special exception is appropriate for its location and compatible with the permitted uses adjacent to and in the vicinity of the property. It's a service that people need. It's surrounded by all kinds of subdivisions. Second choice. People always need a second choice. You know, there is one only down the street in the area. And, you know, sometimes it's busy, too crowded. Some people not choose to go in a crowded, you know, laundromat. Okay. Explain how this uh, proposed special session will not adversely affect the public interest. It's a safe family kind of atmosphere, a laundromat. You know, you could, a nice laundromat, you can bring your kids when you have to go and wash all your clothes. It's going to be a nice What's addition. That lot's been vacant. Um, you know, it's currently just uh, collects litter. It'll bring increase the tax base. And of course, they're building apartments right down the street. Um, I don't know when they're going to start, but I know they got their approval. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate your testimony. Is there anyone else here to speak uh, for or against this application? Yes. Please, please come to the podium. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Barbara Green. I'm representing several homeowners and homeowners association this morning, and I am just the first of several that will speak in opposition to this proposed laundromat. Um, a laundromat is a laundromat is a laundromat. That's all it is. We already have two that are serving the same geographical area. The closest one is less than a half a mile away. It is approximately 
two blocks away, Wash World on the corner of North Main and Prescott Road. The neighborhood simply does not need another laundromat. It adds nothing aesthetically to the neighborhood. We already have a proliferation of, of convenience stores that we're already trying to close. The laundromat that we have in our neighborhood attracts drugs, and I propose that this one will be no exception. It's a laundromat. It's a gathering places for various and sundry individuals, and that's the type of traffic, unfortunately, that that neighborhood uh, attracts. Now, there has been um, uh, references to crimes and other things, and, and indeed that was discussed that night. It has absolutely no bearings on the fact that we don't want another laundromat in that immediate area. Um, you have to keep in mind that that North Main Carter is a main entryway into Columbia. We should be trying to add businesses that will add something to the immediate aesthetics of the neighborhood as well as people coming into Columbia, give them a reason to stop, shop, add to the tax base that way. There's absolutely nothing on North Main, but I keep hearing at these various meetings and whatnot that there are going to be rezonings in North Main, rezonings in, on Farrell Road, but we still have businesses there that absolutely adds nothing to the neighborhood. Um, there's another laundromat on the corner of Farrell Road and Wilkes Road. So we have two serving the same geographical base. We don't need another one. And I would hope that the uh, committee here would, would rule in our favor today, as there will be others who will bring forth some other uh, points on that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Chairman and Board. My name is Patricia Gist Coleman. I own the property that will sit right behind this proposed laundromat. I have worked diligently with the City of Columbia Police Department as well as the Sheriff Department in cleaning up the laundering that has been taking place on Coon Road side. Now, my house sits on the corner of Mayor and Coon Road. We have open prostitution, open urination. I have worked with Captain White and his team to clean up that area. And within the last six months, we have been able to reduce the laundering in that neighborhood. My concerns are for this proposed laundromat is that it creates no purpose in the neighborhood. It will be unsafe for vehicular traffic. We have a city bus that comes down North Main, turns right on Meridian Drive, turns right again on Coon Road, which ties up the traffic on North Main and is literally a visual problem on Coon Road. There are very few people that ever stop at the stop sign on the corner of Meridian and Coon Road. Another problem we have is water drainage. We had a bit of rain yesterday. If you were to go out there today, the topography of the land, we had settling water there all the time, which means that the property will have to be built up, which also probably means that we will not have a drainage of water properly uh, leaving the property. Um, according, well, in reference to the barber shop that sits there now, that property was vacant for many years. Mr. Tolliver has come in, created a wonderful business there. Hours of operation are conducive to the neighborhood. He has employed young people in the neighborhood. It's clean. We never have to ask him to do anything to upkeep his property. Now, I have had to call every other week 
to get that property, that vacant property cleaned off because they do not maintain it, whether it's the realtor's problem or whether it's the owner's problem. I have to call during the summer for them to come clean it up. Captain White and his team have been more than helpful in getting someone out there to help clean the property. Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Yeah, come on. My name is Diane Wally. I'm the president of Belvedere. And, we, and, and my thing is, they come in our neighborhoods and never contribute anything. It tears up between uh, 29203 and 4. Everybody want to come in now. And the reason why is we getting ready to boom. But there's no restaurants, sit down restaurants in those neighborhoods that we go to. And, and you know, I didn't know this meeting. I had other things I need to do this, this morning. But we fighting liquor stores, convenience stores, and um, laundromats that don't do nothing for our neighborhood. They come in our neighborhood, they don't help our neighbors, they don't do, they don't contribute, they don't hire none of us but they nasty the people. And I have been fighting for a long time, a long time. I was at a, a meeting last week at the license thing. One man told me that he's tired of us fighting, but this is our neighborhood. You, you, they, they don't live there. You know, I feel like we know the situation we know what's going on in our neighborhood. When y'all come up here, we elect, I don't know how, well, they elect y'all to do what you need to do. But the police have records that it's really bad. It's a lot of lottery right there. I come through there every day, every day, every day. And these are homeowners trying to get their houses to, together and trying to get our neighborhood looking like Five Points and Vista and stuff. We will never get it like this as long as we got these convenience stores and these uh, laundromats that have lottery, prostitution, hanging in the back. And, 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 and once they close, and once they get in there, it's hard to get them out. Next thing, they go have a little convenience store on the side, and they want to have a liquor store. You know, it's time to stop now. It's 46 liquor stores between 2 notch, 20, uh, 203 and 29204. And that should stop. Convenience stores and liquor stores, and now they want to do the seven-day thing. It's time for this to stop now. They're not going in these other neighborhoods like they're coming in ours. I, I, I just couldn't sit here and not say anything. I'm going to fight to the day that I die here because we, we got it. I don't care about the beeper because we got it bad on Beltline. And I told all our neighborhood leaders, we need to start pulling together so they can stop coming in our neighborhood. They don't do anything but tear it, tear it down. We can't even get a decent grocery store. So, you know, if you, if you have a heart and you see, you ride through there, I know y'all ride through, you see what's going on. You see what's going on. We can't even get a decent uh, drive-through uh, grocery, I mean, a restaurant there. Thank you, you so know, much for your testimony. You. Would anybody else like to speak? Yeah. Morning. I am the president of the neighborhood that the proposed laundromat um, would like to come, and we do oppose that because um, the laundromat that's already exists is like 1,100 feet. You can actually walk out you know, um, if um, a sidewalk would be, and look down and see the laundromat that exists already. So this is nothing that we, you know, we really don't need. Gotcha. And that, that's, is that laundromat, is it just a coin-operated laundromat? You just walk in and do it that's not supervised or anything? No, it is actually supervised. They have workers in there as well. Is that the Wash World? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the actually, there's one on Rosewood. Those are actually pretty nice. I've used the one on Rosewood. Right, they've got clean. a lot of them. I don't know about this one, but they've got fluff and fold and televisions and staff. They and, do. They do. and I think that operator's got about seven of them in the 
in the Midlands. If you, if you go to the website, you'll, you'll see they've got a bunch of different um, locations. Very good. Is there anything else? Um, yes, of course, we are opposing the laundromat being there. There are three churches that sit right in front of that property, which oppose to it. Reverend McCallum cannot be here today, which he is opposing to it. He's already uh, fighting with the situation with the Obama store um, situation between Prescott and um, North Main. There are a tremendous number of prostitution that are going on and adjacent to the new laundromat that they want to build their um, convenience store. Um, there's issues that are going there. Ms. Gibbs says she just spoke about um, having prostitution coming in her yard. If she comes home late at night, there's an issue there. Um, we're not saying that we don't want them there. We're just not wanting that type of business there. Um, maybe something else, maybe a nice restaurant, which we don't have. We're trying to build up our neighborhood in the in the North Columbia area between North Main from Columbia College all the way up to 20 to make it better. It's time for a change. We're ready for it. And this is not anything that um, we're wanting at this time or any other time. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and I would also like to add as well, we already have an ongoing problem with the water drainage that we've been trying to address for years. All three of us are actually children that grew up in the neighborhood yes, and we are still there. We stayed there. Um, I bought a property next to where I grew up at. And so we want to see where we grew up to actually come up, you know what I'm saying? And so we're already having the sewer issues that we have. We really do not need another laundromat. May I ask a question? When you look on or when I looked on Google Maps and did the aerial, does that property, it almost looks like there's, it must hold water. It looks like it channels it does. in the middle of it, it where it was, you've it got a lot of green space and then like, dirt where does it pond in heavy rains and channels mm -hmm. yes and it will be a, a problem for the um, business next door to it which is the barber shop and yes. the neighbors houses behind it they'll have to do some tremendous build up there yeah. will definitely be water damages we're already trying to get the pipelines there for the drainage issue mm -hmm. as it is right now we're working diligently um with that to to get that established in our neighborhood. And also the barbershop that's next door, they actually looked at that property as well, but because of the extensive buildup that would be needed, um, that's the reason why they did not go with trying to build a new barbershop on that. They took the, the building that was next to it. And by buildup, I think like in the land. The land. Site, site work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. You can come back to the podium. That's okay. Take your time. I just wanted to say that there's no pond there. Um, they have continuously repaved North Main Street. And so on the street side, there is the, the it goes down about three feet. Um, obviously, they'll have to either, the rest of the lot is fairly level. They'll either have to, uh, they were looking at the option of doing those stacking retainer walls and putting that in with some trees and landscaping, you know, to make it pretty, you know, and that would deal with the issue of it being higher on the main street side than on the back road. So if y'all, I was going to wait until a board discussion, but there just doesn't seem to be a lot of information. So you're saying that, that what, what is the history of this property? Was this... I think the Timmons and the Dorns used to own a bunch of filling stations around Columbia. Is this that same family that... This was owned by Charles Timmons, um, and he bought it as an investment and then tried to resell this it. This is an empty lot. Yeah, it's two lots. Um, he paid about uh, just under $100,000 so for So have y'all done some kind of looking into what it's going to take to... There, there's just nothing in the packet you're referencing... No, doing it's, work, it's but. either two options. It's, you know, either some build-up. You know, you know how when they repave the road, sometimes we have that on Trenum Road, too. Right. But, so uh, there's two options, and they've got the original building drawings, and they haven't done the landscaping part, because that will involve a landscape architect, and they don't want to put any more <laughs> money into something if it isn't going to be workable. And obviously they'll do whatever they need to do to make it, you know, 
function properly and be acceptable and, and be attractive at the same time. Now I know that some people were concerned about the bus stop there. Well, the bus stop could be moved down a block. You know, they can do that if that's a concern. Okay. But, I, but it's not going to increase the shootings. It's not going to increase the drug problem. It's not going to increase the prostitution in the neighborhood. And it's going to be well supervised. I, I, I kind of, I, I don't think it will either, but I, I'm just getting hung up on the proliferation. I mean, I, I think somebody made an excellent point earlier that, you know, it is sort of the gateway corridor coming into Columbia from I-20. And I have two, I mean, you know, coin-operated, basically, washing machine things right within a couple blocks of each other. It doesn't seem like that's... Well, That's, there, um, there are no other the, laundromats going all the way out to I-20, and they're doing that. They're going to do this big apartment project right there on North Main and just this side of I-20. So between Columbia College and I-20, this will be just the only two laundromats. And as he said, he lived there himself and couldn't get a washing machine. He said that there's there's what going up as it is it as a risk. Yeah, right up there on housing. Mason Road, you know where Mason Mason Road is this side of right. twenty. They're putting in some big Apartment. complex there. Yeah. But don't most new apartments. apartments have laundry facilities on site? They do, they do, but what happens is you get like what, two washers and a hundred units or fifty units that share it. And if you work a lot like a lot of people do, they want to do all their laundry at one time. You go to a laundromat, you can Get there, use five machines, and you're done. You don't have to spend. I'm sorry, it's my elbow. It's okay. You don't have to spend two days trying to get your laundry done. Right. It's the convenience factor. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, if you would like to approach one more time, that'd be all right. information that she's given about an apartment, th those are not apartments that's coming there, those are actually townhomes that will have the capability of having their own washer and dryers there. Um, and that plan has actually been put on hold now, at this point. Um, as far as the, how close the laundromats are to each other, it's 1,100 feet. We already, I mean, literally, just like as the president stated, you could stand right there in that area and see Wash World right down the street. I can tell why you're not excited. Okay, thank you very much. One other additional thing, that area, according to our city officials, has been designated as a flood plain. So that in and of itself would be another obstacle that, that is a flood plain. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Board discussion? I've just got it's hard to get excited with the exhibits on the uh, application. Well, I be willing to make a motion to, to deny. I think that, you know, number one, the vehicular pedestrian safety, there's just not enough information. You know, a question was asked about curb, curb cuts. That wasn't answered. There's no, you know, it's just not very well fleshed out. Um, concentration. Um, you know that that's just a tough one. I mean, you know what what is 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 two too many and four not enough. Yeah. Um, but you've already got and you know I think there are different kinds of. I mean I, I understand why y'all are fighting. I mean I applaud you for. Um, that's one of the things I've really am, is struck struck with me about being on this board or people that that really fight to preserve their neighborhoods, but. You know, I, I understand that there is an element that gets drawn to some of these filling stations and laundromats. Um, I think you can make the case that, that it, it's just, there, there would be a concentration of them. And then the public interest, um, I think I've got a problem with that. And then I, I don't doubt that, that it doesn't pond, but I've just got an issue looking at Google Maps and seeing where I can see on the middle of this property where it's, you can see where water has been channeling. Now, I don't know if that's from, you know, five years or, or, or five minutes ago, but um, I anyway, think, that, that's my input. I think I, we need to be, 
I, I agree with your comments, first of all, Calhoun, but let, let's be careful with any sort of um, drainage, flooding related discussion because it, it's really irrelevant. And when you, you have vacant sites like this that are ponding in the existing condition, what you see a lot of times upon redevelopment is an improvement in the situation. So, um, and I appreciate you so, pointing that so out. Right, right, right. No, and I, I think you're right, but, but I think it um, furthers my point. It sure would go a long way if the applicant had hired someone to flesh this out to say, you know, there are some challenges on this property, but here's how we're going to mitigate them. Yeah, you know, the city land development code would would satisfy a lot of that. But I think I think that's absolutely irrelevant. It, in my personal view, when I run down, we're, we're, we're trying to discern, determine whether we can grant a special exception to allow a coin operated laundromat on a property like this. And when I run down the specific criteria, I, I can't get there. Um, I think the testimony of the, the surrounding neighborhoods and the surrounding concerned citizens have pointed out enough factors in my mind that I do think another facility like this could be a detriment to the neighborhood, and um, I, 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 can't, I can't make it work. I wholeheartedly agree with both of them. Um, yeah. uh, okay. I have a motion. Second. Somebody want to run through the motion? Oh. Keep it up there. Okay. I'll make a motion to um, deny the special exception 2018-0003-6104 North Main Street um, in that um, pros, uh, the proposed special exception. Um, I've got an issue with uh, vehicular and pedestrian safety. Um, with number four, public safety, nuisance, con nuisance conditions, five, concentration, seven, compatible, and eight, public interest. I'd say also the proliferation of existing definitions. Yeah, and I, think, I think five, concentration would, would okay. cover the proliferation Perfect. of, of, of A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, the um, variance is denied. Last matter is n item number eight on the agenda, 2018-0016 variance for 108 River Ridge Road. It's a variance to the side yard setback. If the applicant's here, they can come forward. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, I am the owner of the lot in question. Um, I also own uh, the other adjacent lots as well. Um, there, there you go, that's perfect. Um, so the shortest lot, which is the top one on your screen, that's currently occupied um, by an existing house, and the six beneath it are all owned by me. Um, right now, the RG2 zoning uh, comes with a five foot side setback, and I'm requesting a variance for a three foot side setback for lot three now. However, um, if I'm granted that variance, I will, I, I intend to return to request a similar variance for the other lots as well. Um, the lots as they exist now are already padded out um, and graded level in sort of a little terraced fashion uh, because the, the, the whole parcel slopes from left to right uh, and there's already power transformers, water meters, uh, electric cable, everything's already there. Um, that's from the previous developer as well, um, just to mentioned that I didn't have anything to do with the original uh, plat that's out here, but I've, I'm hoping to sell these lots and I've kind of been working to do it for a while um, and uh, just getting a lot of feedback that they're unsaleable in their current extremely narrow uh, buildable envelope that they've got. Um, the 
the one house that's already there uh, is, <clears throat> so when I bought the property, just to back up, I, I, I was given a plat that was never uh, recorded that had a zero lot line on the left-hand side and a six-foot uh, setback on the right-hand side. The existing house that's there, um, I, I think has already been built. I think you said you thought that it was built in that sort of left justified format where it's all the way on the left, left side. Um, so they, they certainly wouldn't be impacted by um, the three foot side setbacks that, that I'm requesting today. Um, there's a municipal owned uh, uh, waste lift station that's visible in the right side of that picture. And then there's a, uh, a multifamily apartment complex on the other side. Um, I think it's pretty easy to argue that there aren't really any people who will be <coughs> adversely affected by my request. Um, That's all I've got. Do you have any questions for me? I, I have, a, I guess, a question for staff before we begin this discussion. So, all right, well, first of all, this, this is not a plat that's attached. That's a staking and drainage plan. So it would be helpful if we had a copy of the bonded or recorded final plat. But There, there's got to be one for the for the subdivision, but anyway, regardless of that, and that's right. And I think that would be helpful as our discussion. And here's why: I'm not so sure if you're asking. Well, this you, what you're asking is a, a variance to the city zoning requirements, and I understand that request. But I'm not so sure if the more appropriate request would be to the developer who sets up the Declaration of Covenants and Restrictions for this subdivision, because I'm not sure, and I'm asking the question legally, if we I can... I think that was the plat you referenced that was never recorded. Is that the... Yeah, but you... The subdivision plat was just actually never recorded? Is that what you were referencing? That's correct, but um, somebody in your office sent me back the recorded plat, so it... Mm -hmm. there, in, in every development I've ever been a part of, there, there has to be some sort of rec recorded plat for the developer to sell lots. You can't do it off the staking, off the grading and drainage plan. And, but what my question for you is, is I want to make sure that we are able to, to grant what he's asking because if there's a recorded document, which there usually is for these subdivisions, stating these developer-imposed setbacks, it's not really a city zoning court. It's not, it's not really a city zoning matter it, it goes back to can he get the developer to grant relief, relief from that. So I think we need to be careful about I, 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 exempting it on, on the city level when you've got a developer who's put these um, Declaration of Covenants for this, these lots in this subdivision. So I, I, I believe I am the declarant. Um, the, I, bought, I bought the entire you know, parcel that's got it's, – it's really 10 lots total. There's four more that are okay. across the street. Um, I, I don't even know who the original developer was, but um, I, I believe that until it's built out 75% that I am I'm the declarant. And, and that may be. I just, just want to make sure I, I bring that up. I think we may have some legal issues if, if, if we're not correct about this. And, granting relief of a city zoning ordinance when you have this recorded document set up by the original developer um, mandating particular setbacks. So that, that would just be my comment slash question. And I, I'm not sure the answer, just want to bring that up. Got it, so, but you could potentially approve my request, but then I would still be potentially bound by the existing covenants. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Understood. So I just think we need to be careful. Yes, sir. Okay. 
it's not the, the subdivision would not would not meet the city or county land development regulations without the recorded plat to settle lots from. Agree. Now, I'll when when I'm done here, I'll gotcha. I'll I'll email it to you. Got it. Yep. So what are the what are the existing setbacks for the RG2? Uh, the side setbacks are five five foot on each five side. Five foot on each both sides. Mm -hmm. And the original and the original the first house built has zero on one side and six on the other. Correct. And you are requesting a variance for three and just for three. Three feet. Oh, sorry. On both sides? Yes, sir. Clarify, I wouldn't have a problem with what you're doing whatsoever. I just want to make sure it's something that we won't have a legal problem with in the future. That, that, that's my whole point. I'm fine with what you're asking for. We need to make that subject to... I, I don't know. That's why I asked the question. I just, yeah, I have no problem with what it's trying to do. I've just seen enough of these subdivisions and how they're developed. That I, I know how they're set up. Right. And I think that the applicants pretty much, you know, explained that you know, through all the variants um, uh, for the variance request for the different um, applications. Do we want to go through those real quickly? Uh, do you have that in front of you, um, your, your application? Uh, I do not. I apologize. Nobody ever has their application. <laughs> So I, I, I don't want to make, rehash your whole presentation, but let's just make sure we got the, um, these, you know, kind of, uh, in my mind, clearly understood. So describe the extraordinary exceptional conditions such as the size, shape, and topography that pertain to the subject property. Uh, <clears throat> the existing lots are presently platted at 35 feet wide and when you factor in a five foot setback on either side that reduces the buildable envelope to just 25 feet which is in my understanding is this was originally in the county and the setback was zero and six or zero dot line on at least one side or what it was originally intended that way mm -hmm. and it's my understanding from speaking with the folks at the county that the first house was built that way Right. Even though it's it's technically uh, just RG two. Um, okay. So yes, in the interest of creating a a buildable envelope, um, you know, just those extra couple of feet on each side make a tremendous difference. And um, number two, describe how the condition is noted do not generally apply to other properties or structures in the vicinity. I think you mentioned that you've got a already, already deeded lots that are narrow and weren't designed for the existing setback. Correct. Right. And again, just to stress that everything, all the, all the infrastructure, unfortunately, is already there for these these lot sizes. There's a transformer between each pair of lots, and, uh, water meters, and uh, and that would would go to three. Then describe the ways in which the application of the requirement for the zoning ordinance effectively prohibit or unreasonably restrict the utilization of the subject property. Uh, Mentioned that they were too narrow, yes, really, sir. to build a, the house. Correct. It's been the consistent feedback with would be purchasers and developers uh, that. Are, that we've spoken with. 
And then describe how the granting the variance would not have substantial detriment to the adjacent property or to the public good. Well, for one thing, the property is just kind of sitting there derelict at the moment. And uh, I just think it'd be good for the town to have it cleaned up and developed and get some families in there. Um, and there's no detriment to any, any neighbors anywhere by by the requested variance. And is the variance request a minimum necessary? Um, yes, we believe so. Um, it's, it's just untenable at a 25 foot wide envelope. Uh, 20, 29 will be tough enough, but we can manage. And how will the, this proposal be in harmony with the uh, purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance and not be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare? Yeah, again, there's uh, the, the lots in question are pretty well isolated from anything else. You've got the municipal lift station on the one side, a, uh, a multifamily apartment uh, complex on the other side. Um, there's simply no, no parties that would be harmed by this. Uh, and it certainly seems that it's in keeping with the original developers intention to have a total of six feet of setback. They, they originally intended six on one, zero on the other. We're simply proposing three and three. Thank you. Um, which, by the way, helps tremendously from a building standpoint. If you, if you do have a zero lot line, if, if you've got something that's been grandfathered as such, they're pretty stringent uh, building restrictions. Like, I don't think you can have windows on the side. There's a lot, lot of fireproofing um, stuff that comes into play that if we go three and three is not a factor. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak about this request for variance? Any, um, any questions from the board or any discussion? Might want to help me with this, but I'm I'm going to make a motion that we uh, approve this uh, variance request uh, based on the testimony of the applicant and his written um, application as well, um, subject to uh, uh, the comments from staff, and um, conditioned upon there not being an existing um, uh, deeded. Um, plat, recorded deeded plat that would um, be contrary to this request. Yeah, I think so. I think in theory what you're trying to do it works. No problem with that. Just want to make sure from a legality standpoint that this is the correct approach. You know, I'm not sure if this couldn't have been handled just by a, a letter to the original developer and um, just simply right. modifying the existing <coughs> covenants and restrictions, et cetera, but um, I, think, I think that works. Okay. And then I'd also like to ask Rachel, from a standpoint of um, this gentleman trying to get this all figured out, I mean, uh, obviously you can't do it today, but I mean, does he not, can he do all of these, he doesn't have to do each one of these individually, does he? Can he, can he do all of the lots? I mean, they're all right there together. Into one request, since it's, they're almost all identical, okay. Okay. Any discussion on the, on the motion? Is there a second? Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. All Thank in favor? You. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.